This is our route. Imilach, Lemraiti, Unan, Taudeni. How many days will it take? From Imilach to Lemraiti? Four days. From Lemraiti to Unan? Nine days. From Unan to Tower Deni, four days. I am a child of Imila. I have lived a long life, and now I am an old man. Old and very tired, but I am content. I have been chosen to tell you about my people. We are the Kunta, descendants of Sidi el Mokhtar Kunti, servant of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and salvation be upon him. The Azalai is what we men have done since the time of our ancestors, since the time of our ancestors' ancestors. The Azalai is the great caravan which goes to the heart of the Sahara in search of salt. If I were to tell you how many tons of salt I myself have transported since I was a young man, you'd take me for an old liar, an old fool. For us, the Azalai is a source of great pride. Let me take you to Imilach. This is a great privilege for me. Let me tell you about my people. The Azalai begins right here in Imilach. To reach the salt mines of Tau Deni, you have to face many hardships. Extreme cold at night, storms, hunger, fatigue, heat. You cover 1,500 kilometers in 40 days without stopping. You have to keep on walking. From dawn till dusk, the caravan doesn't stop. You eat and drink tea while you're walking. You have to get the teapot out, light the stove. You must never allow the camel's pace to slow. Once a caravan got lost, in order to survive, the men had to slaughter one of their camels and drink the water from its stomach. But it was only through God's will that they were saved. God is great, my brothers. God is great. A few kilometers away, two men have gone off by themselves. They're getting ready to face the desert, leaving behind the men, women, and children of Imilach. These two have been chosen by the chief to bring back the salt, the white gold. They are the two men who will undertake the Azalai. Ah, I'm too old now, but only a few years ago, I would have been one of them. I have now entered the age of wisdom. They have reached the age of confronting great hardships. It's the first day of the Azalai. Umbirak is the camel driver. It is his task to watch over the animals. He will be at the rear of the caravan, 
ready to leap into action should a camel break free. He'll be taking young camels that have never carried a load before. On the long journey to the mine, he will have to train them and discipline them. Mbarak is the guide. It is his task to lead the caravan, following his instinct, the sun, the Belhadi star. He decides when the caravan moves off and when it stops. It is up to him to bring back both men and camels in good health. But above all else, he must bring back the precious white gold, the salt. Last night in Burak had the runs. <laughs> <laughs> He'd eaten too much millet and too much meat. We had to tie him onto the back of his camel. Mbarak and Mbwirak, the men of the Azalai, they are good, upright men and are much loved by the great chief of Imilach. May God keep them safe on the way of the Azalai. <laughs> Imilach, the land of my birth, my only land, a land of peace. We, the men of Imilach, are well known for our piety. There is no road in Imirach. It isn't a village as such. The sand buildings are for welcoming travelers passing through and for holding meetings. No one lives in them. Our families live in tents scattered across a hundred kilometers of territory, following their herds from pasture to pasture. This then is the central point, the meeting place. But why here? Because this is where our well is. There is one man who does not go on the Azalai. He's the guardian of our traditions, the wisest of the wise, a man respected and taken heed of throughout the Sahara, from Mali to the Maghreb, a man who gives selflessly of himself that others may live in peace. His name is Sidi Mohammed El Hetal. He is a saint. Sidi Mohammed El Hetal is our chief. He has a very large family which owns thousands of camels. It is he who decides when the caravans set off. <laughs> Ah, 
Alone. When this silence surrounds us, when the only sound is that of the camel's feet beating out the rhythm in the sand, we, the men of the Azarai, feel the solitude. Often welcome, sometimes oppressive, this solitude is our companion. It tells us that the caravan is moving, moving ever onwards towards the Tudani mines, 700 kilometers further north. Tea is the only cure for tiredness. Mbarak and Mbwirak gather the straw which will feed the camels for 40 days. And they plait the ropes for keeping the camels tied up. They move forward a stage at a time until they reach the well at Lemreti, the last well before the final 10-day stretch to the mines. On the way, they teamed up with Lufer and Abba, who have their own camels. They will make the journey together. The two guides at the front and the two camel drivers at the rear will keep each other company. <laughs> Barka is an old friend of mine, as well as being the father of Mbarak the guide. He taught him the heritage that was passed down to us by our ancestors, the Azalai. Every gesture has been passed down. Follow the Belhadi star. Choose the best salt. Always pray to God. Never stray from the root. Barka is proud to see his son go off, just as we are all proud when our sons return laden with salt. Old Barka won't make that trip again. His place is now at the side of Chief Sidi Mohammed. <laughs> It used to rain a lot. There were pastures and camps all around. Now there is only drought. It's all changed. Most of the youngsters have left. They've immigrated to neighboring countries. Yes, that's how it is. I pray to God to make it rain. I pray for help with digging new wells so that life will return to our land. I pray to God that all will be as it was before so that those who left will return. That is all. I just want them to come back. On the Azalai, there is no pasturage. There is nothing but long days and fast walking. 
You can go for up to five days without feeding the camels. You have to tie their mouths to stop them from grazing. The star, the star we call Belhadi, is what guided our ancestors. It is their heritage to us. Using that star, we always find our way to the mines at Taudini. It's thanks to that star that people have managed to go on living in this land. On the Azalai, there are places with no trace of life, and there are dunes like mazes, which not even the Belhadi star could lead you out of. Fourth day of walking, fourth day of work. Mbuirak is well again. There's no need to tie him to his camel. When a man is sick, it's the only solution. It's a terrible experience, and one that I have been through myself. It was the first time I took the route of the white gold my rite of passage from being a child to becoming the man I am now. I went with my uncle. One night, I fell from my camel onto the rocks. I was unable to walk, and so my uncle tied me to the camel. <laughs> <coughs> Barak is worried. A young, fully laden camel has hurt itself. Tomorrow morning, Birak will have to treat the injury. You have to treat injured camels. Otherwise they can panic and go flying into the other camels. And all their loads can end up on the ground. There's a wedding party at Imilach. Barak and Buirak are by now far away from the sound of the drums. Men, women and children have gathered together to witness this marriage. The festivities will continue for three days and the happy couple will meet for the first time. That is our tradition. The bride and groom cannot meet before their wedding. For the occasion, many animals will be sacrificed to feed the guests, some of whom have traveled from afar to be here. We eat fresh meat cooked over hot coals, and we drink tea. 
And we, the elders, talk about times past, about the future. And we pray continually for our children, who are on their way to the mines at Tudeni. The first time you go on the Azalai, the constant effort really tires you out. But eventually, you get used to the suffering. I know every place on the way to the mines at Taudini. Our ancestors gave us the route to Taudini. Now it is my turn to show the youngsters how to reach the mines. Along the way, you suffer from the cold, from being far from home. You cross landscapes of nothing but rock, sand dunes. You're beset by the cold, by hunger, by fatigue. Some of the dunes are so immense that no one could cross them. Only a guide with lots of experience can lead the camels safely to the mines. <laughs> The water that gushes forth from the earth at Umreti is crystal clear. This is the eighth day of the Azalai. The old camels know that they won't drink again for another 20 days. Mbuirak makes sure each animal drinks its fill of water. After Limreti, there's nothing ahead for our men but one long walk. I remember that precious water and how much I used to miss it during that long trek. The ninth day, then the tenth, the eleventh, right up to the twentieth. Always walking. Leaving Imilach far behind. The water at Lemreti soon becomes a distant memory. The water which must be made to last. The water which becomes an obsession. The water which you crave. Ration the food for each day. Forget your aches and pains. Keep straight on for the mines. Mbarak, Mbuirak, and their two companions, Lufer and Abba, are the brave men who were chosen to bring back this salt. Suffering is of no importance to us. 
This mortal life is all suffering. Taudeni is all suffering. In former times, political prisoners were sent there to slave in the mines and die of exhaustion under the pitiless sun. I said that suffering is of no importance to us. All that matters is the day we shall stand before our Creator, the day when the truth is revealed and each man shall know his true worth. How is the injured young camel? Getting better. We've put him a little bit away from the others. If he isn't completely recovered by the time we get to Taudini, we'll exchange him for some salt. I don't want to take any risks with our load. If it panicked, lots of tablets of salt could get broken. Today we're at Guniftat. There'll be no more rest for us now. We really have to be strong from this point on. This is where we have to be strong. The laughter keeps the fear at bay. But Barak knows he's responsible for several lives. By bringing back the salt, he carries the fate of our people on his shoulders. At the same moment, a long way away at Imilach, Chief Sidi Mohammed El Haytal prays with Barka and the other elders for the men of the Azalai. <laughs> they know exactly where their children are right now. They're not far from the mines. At the point where the body really starts to know its limits. You need God on your side if you're to stay alive. You have but one thought in your head. Load the salt, quickly return with it, and sell it in Bamba. We pay a small fortune for the salt. This is how we have lived for centuries. Once more, my God, the Azalai will return to us. Oh, my God. 
باش تاكل مولي تاكل مولي بسوحة باي مقفولة يا بشاش تاكل مولي هادلت فيها وملح تقازا تعود اليوم ما لي حد ولا أما يا بشاش تاكل تودا لي يا حدودا يا بشاش أجاك المولى طاك المولى لينا مولى تحزيني يا بشاش طاك المولى نفتيلك ولتي تفتيلي يا بشاش أجاك المولى نبغى نلقاها ديارة ولا نلقاها مرسولة يا بشاش تعود اليوم ما لي حد ولا أما يا بشاش أجاك المولى تعود اليوم ما لي حد ولا أما يا بشاش Salt is our livelihood. It's thanks to this salt that we can stay alive in this land. It is our goal. It also provides a livelihood for hundreds of miners who have come here from all over West Africa. At Taudeni, Boys, men, and even old men work together mining the salt in order to feed their families. These men have created a real community here. Far from everything, far from everyone, at the heart of the desert, they are united in their labor. The water at Taudeni is salty. Everything here revolves around salt. For a few kilos of this white gold, we exchange camels, tea, tobacco, and water. As they say here, life must be earned. Allah tells us we must earn our living. We must earn it. Taudeni means arriving and then leaving. You cannot stay long in this arid spot. In the middle of the night, accompanied by the howling of the young camels, we leave this place of suffering. We submit our lives into Allah's hands. We have a long trek ahead of us. The pains of the outward journey are back with us from the very first day. There is still a very long way to go before we can finally rest. Don't think about it, not just yet. Just keep walking. Walk another 800 kilometers for another 20 days, retracing the steps of the outward journey, only this time with 200 tablets of salt, each weighing 40 kilos. With each step, the men's feet cry out for them to stop, but the caravan does not wait. Pain impregnates the skin like it will never leave it, but you keep on walking. We are the Kunta, the descendants of Sidi El Mokta Kunti.
Last day of the Azalai. Bamba is on the banks of the river Niger. We are now among the Sonrai people. Not so long ago, they were the princes of the Sahel. It is they who buy our salt. They transport it by boat to the towns where it will be sold yet again. Known as gem salt, it will be consumed all over West Africa. Après huit années passées à la Maison Blanche, Bill Clinton passera ce samedi le relais à George W. Bush. Il prêtera serment avant de s'adresser à la nation. Washington, à tout. C'est en ce moment que les présidents ont de croire. Bamba is still a good way from home, still far from those wide open spaces. Our men let the salt go. Bamba settles down once more, and in Imilach, we wait for our children to return. <laughs> Old Barka learns that the Azalai is back from Bamba. He will soon be reunited with his son, who once again has brought back this salt. Who once again has borne the destiny of his people from the back of his camel. This same year, the great Marabu, Sidi Muhammad El Hetal, organizes a national peace conference. <laughs> He carries on the good work, striving to keep the identity of the Kunta people alive. Preparations are already underway for the next Azalai. 
We all pray for rain to fall from the sky and bring with it life. The life that will continue here for as long as the Azalai is with us. We are the Kunta, the descendants of Sidi El Mokhtar Kunti. <laughs> 